Good evening. We welcome you to the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist. We invite you to visit our parish website and stay up to date with our COVID Cathedral Pastoral Plan, as well as read our weekly bulletin. Today we celebrate the birth of our Lord, Father Arsenault, Father Schumacher, Father Easy, and the entire Cathedral staff wish you and your family a very blessed and holy Christmas season. Allow the Prince of Peace to settle into your hearts and illuminate your spirits to bring forth the Christ child to others you encounter. We are extremely grateful to all those who donated monies for the Christmas beautification of the cathedral. Thank you for your generosity. We invite you to join us on Sunday, December the 27th, as we celebrate the opening mass of the cathedral's bicentennial year. Bishop Desitel will celebrate with us at the 11 o'clock mass. Now we invite you to please stand for the proclamation of the birth of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> The 25th day of December, when ages beyond number had run their course from the creation of the world, when God in the beginning created heaven and earth and formed man in his own likeness, when century upon century had passed since the Almighty set his bow in the clouds after the great flood as a sign of covenant and peace, in the 21st century since Abraham, our father in faith came out of Ur of the Chaldees. In the 13th century since the people of Israel were led by Moses in the exodus from Egypt. Around the thousandth year since David was anointed king. In the 65th week of the prophecy of Daniel. In the 194th Olympiad in the year 752 since the foundation of the city of Rome, 
in the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace. Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah and was made man. The nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the flesh. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you have made manifest your love. When our need for a Savior was great, you sent your Son to be born of the Virgin Mary. Graciously bestow upon this manger your blessing, that all who look upon its kindly figures may be reminded of the humble birth of Jesus, and have their thoughts raised to him who is Emmanuel and Savior of all, and who lives and reigns forever and ever.
of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these saving mysteries, we first call to mind our sins and failings, asking the Lord for his healing and forgiveness in our lives. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh in splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> made this most sacred night, radiant with the splendor of the true light. Grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, 
as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder, dominion rest. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope 
the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria, so all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David to be enrolled with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord.
Good evening and welcome everyone. We just heard read in the second reading for our Christmas liturgy this evening, the grace of God has appeared, saving all. With these words, St. Paul tells Titus in the second reading of our liturgy, the true meaning of Christmas. Words that are very simple, yet inexhaustible in their depth of meaning. They explain that event for which the world had prepared and waited for from the beginning of time. They also explain the event that the world has celebrated for over 2,000 years now, the birth of Jesus Christ, the Savior. The angels announced it to the shepherds. The wise men came from far to see it, and we have celebrated it ever since with lights and carols, with family meals and the giving of gifts, with Christmas trees and the ringing of bells. The grace of God has appeared, saving all, and the world was forever changed. And so we gather here this evening at this Christmas Mass to, for a few moments, put aside all of the noise and traffic all of the hype and shopping malls, and we try to forget for a while all the announcements on the television of what's a good shopping season or a bad shopping season, or crowded flights at the airport, and we take time to be quiet and to come before that humble scene of Blessed Mary and Saint Joseph in the manger. And we join the shepherds in silence and wonder at the presence of God, the newborn Christ child, and reflect in our prayers what this means. The world and all history was changed by the event that we celebrate tonight, when God entered our world not just for a minute, not only for a visit, not with great noise and power, nor in rich surroundings or regal bearing. God entered our world as a little child in the most approachable form possible. No one could ever feel hesitant about approaching a beautiful child. We can never resist the innocence, the purity, and the trust of a child. And this is how God chose to enter into our world and present himself to us. The story of Christmas is a story of love. God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that all who believe in him might have eternal life. God showed his love for us by not just passing through our world for a time, but by becoming a human being like us in every way except sin. God came to share in our human life that we might share in his eternal life. Be not afraid, the angels told the shepherds as we heard in the gospel. Nothing in history of the world, past, present, or future, has ever promised such a gift, the gift of eternal life. From the beginning of time, humanity has searched for that gift that brings complete fulfillment and happiness to us. And in that search, we have often substituted many false hopes 
to satisfy that desire for happiness, whether it be wealth or material pleasure or power or drugs or even the physical world with all of its limitations. All these fall woefully short and do not answer the deepest need and desire of all of our human hearts. In the gospel, the angels proclaim the message to us just as they proclaimed it to the shepherds, telling us, do not be afraid. I proclaim to you good news of great joy. A savior has been born for you who is Christ the Lord. The good news of great joy is that God entered and forever changed our weary world. Now we can never look at the world in the same way because God changed it. He transformed it forever. The Christ child came to share in our world that we might share in his world, a world of grace, a world of love, and eternal life. Despite the world today ever more trying to undo God's work, to return to a view of the world as it was before the coming of Christ, a world of greed and selfishness and sin, we must resist and live as children of a God who loved us so much that he sent his only begotten Son. St. Paul tells Titus in the second reading, the grace of God trains us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age and to be a people who are eager to do what is good. We must be transformed, be changed, and live differently from the way of life offered by the world. Now that the grace of God has appeared, we are called to live as his children, keeping the commandments, loving our neighbor, having a reverence for the right to life of the unborn, being faithful in marriage, obedient to our parents, good citizens in our community, pure in conduct, and practicing our Catholic faith. The event that we celebrate tonight is more than just a historical event that happened 2,000 years ago. The grace of God remains present and continues to save us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same born of the Virgin Mary, is present for our nourishment in the Holy Eucharist that we celebrate this evening. The same Jesus Christ forgives our sins and daily faults in the sacrament of penance. The same Jesus Christ heals us in the anointing of the sick and strengthens us with the gift of the Holy Spirit in confirmation. The seven sacraments, which are the very presence of Christ for us today, helps us to live as St. Paul instructed Titus. While we await the blessed hope and the appearance of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ at the end of all time. And so let this Christmas be a time of renewal and rededication for us. God loved us enough to offer even his son for us. Let us welcome him who in the Christ child has his arms open to receive us. Let us receive him into our hearts and resolve this day to live forever as his children. God bless you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Let us stand as together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, death, and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day when the goodness and kindness of God our Savior has appeared, let us, dear brothers and sisters, humbly pour forth to him our prayers, trusting not in our own good works, but in his mercy. For the Church of God, that in integrity of faith she may await and may welcome with joy him whom the Immaculate Virgin conceived by a word and wondrously brought to birth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the progress and peace of the whole world, that what is given in time may become a reward in eternity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those oppressed by hunger, sickness, or loneliness, that through the mystery of the nativity of Christ, they may find relief in both mind and body, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families of our congregation, that receiving Christ, they may learn also to welcome him in the poor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died. May hmm. they rejoice in the kingdom of God for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, O Lord our God, that the Virgin Mary, who merited to bear God and man in her chaste womb, may commend the prayers of your faithful in your sight. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John the Evangelist, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and our Bishop Douglas, order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.